Hello, today we'll be talking about representation in music videos, things like age, social class, costumes, ethnicity, gender, props and product placements, as well as locations. We might as well start with locations, since there's no particular order here that matters. So it turns out Berlin is actually used for music videos. Mark Owen used the German capital city for his music video, Stars, which shows bright lights, which if you haven't put two and two together already, links to the fact that the title of the song is Stars, which are very bright. So in the music video, Berlin is shown as a very lively city, with teenagers partying and young adults drinking, which is how the city is naturally. I haven't been myself, but I have googled it. Turns out Germans like to get very drunk. Ibiza is another sunny location where similar to music to that of Berlin is played. Pop music and electric dance, mainly. For example, the budget version of One Direction, The Wanted, did a music video in Ibiza with Glad You Came, which features the boy band dancing, singing, messing around on the beach, holding their hands up on a speedboat, generally just a lot of cringy stuff that no one really wants to see when they go on holiday. Uh, the women are also half naked, uh, which links to the idea that pop music is known for sexualising women. David Bowie thought it would be a good idea to shoot a music video in the desert. Personally, I, I don't think it's a great idea. It's just too hot. But since then, desert have been used by the likes of The Killers as well as Lana Del Rey. The type of genre that would use the desert in a music video tends to be kind of indie rock. If this song was upbeat, the band would show the desert in a positive light to represent freedom, obviously warm weather, or some form of journey. But if the song was a bit slow and depressing, like uh, <coughs> Lana Del Rey, then the desert could symbolise loneliness, death and emptiness. All really good feel-good stuff as per usual with Lana Del Rey. It also helps so the desert are free to visit, unlike a studio which artists have to pay and rent to use. LA and Miami is used by rap and R&B artists. This is because some of the areas in Los Angeles have a reputation for being poor areas and scruffy, which tends to be referred to as the ghetto. An example of this is NWA's music video for Straight Outta Compton, which demonstrates gun violence and priest brutality, as well as fast driving police cars. The group also mentioned an AK-47 in their song, an assault rifle commonly used by criminals in LA which shows the location in a negative way. Michael Moore used the same location but in a positive way, full of life and people enjoying themselves at a bright environment in thrift shop. Now I know this is hard to believe, but London is typically shown in a negative way. For example, Ed Sheeran graces with his depressing music video for the A-Team, featuring a woman addicted to cocaine and turns to prostitution to pay for drugs. The entire video is in black and white, which makes the viewer feel even more gloomier than they needed to. The video showed that London is a dark and brooding city, which is just full of crime. Rarely, however, London is portrayed positively. For example, Lily Allen shot her music video for LDN in London in the daytime with lots of vibrant colours, such as wearing a red dress, which links to a lot of iconic imagery in London, like red buses and the London Underground. Mansions are used by rich artists to show that they have too much money and take too many drugs with that money to think that using a mansion was a good idea for a music video. They're typically used by pop artists such as DJ Khaled in his video for the song I'm the One, where he's surrounded by women with a limited amount of clothing, does lots of pointless actions, like a woman playing croquet on her own in a bra. In another video featuring a mansion, Jamie Foxx is hosting a house party wearing a suit. The song is a rap pop song showing the mansion is a good place to have a party and a lively event where everyone is happy and drunk. And the suit implies that he has a lot of money, showing that mansions are for posh and rich people only. Now studios are fairly cheap to rent usually, which is why they're used by indie bands like Catfish and the Bottlemen and can portray any mood to match the tone of their music. For example, if it were a love song, they may use red lights to symbolise love or blue lighting for a saddening impact on the viewer. Catfish and the Bottlemen, however, use the black and white to stick to their theme of black and white album covers. Abandoned warehouses are used for a negative tone of a music video, mainly used by rock bands, punk bands and indie. That's because they can't afford major locations to rent slash hire and so find locations like this. The abandoned look can look pretty cool to give the video a darker tone and sort of grim look. So now that I've bored you all with locations, we can move on to age now and how it is shown in music videos. Generally children are represented as innocent, usually shown through their body language or dialogue. Like Naughty Boy's video for La La La, original name. Shows kids putting their fingers in their ears to block out mature topics like alcohol, sex and drugs which is all going on around them in the video. Teenagers are seen as rebellious and can be seen performing antisocial and reckless behaviour. Like in We Found Love by Rihanna, where young people are seen smoking, taking drugs and stealing. This links back to the stereotype that teenagers are immature, which I don't personally believe in. 
Classes are shown through a persona's costume or their location, like an Ed Sheeran's video for the A-Team. The woman shown is a drug addict who sells her body to buy more drugs. If it wasn't obvious already, this takes place down in south of London. So that's clearly how lower class is presented. Whereas middle class would be presented as well kept and hard working people. And upper class as very tidy, wearing costumes like suits or dresses, basically living very luxurious lives while the lower class people sell their bodies for money. Costumes for women are usually extremely sexualized, you know, like very little clothing. Usually their bum is entirely visible, or breasts they can usually be seen as well. Or if you have a complete breakdown like Miley Cyrus in Wrecking Ball, then women are entirely such as because she's bare naked. Which no one really needs to see. I'm a strong believer of leaving some things to the imagination, but this goes against that in every way. Just very, very wrong. Male costumes are usually a lot more appropriate, so it's clothes like suits or leather jackets, jeans or expensive shoes, that kind of thing. You generally don't tend to see a man's bare chest in a music video, unless that man is vain like Jason Derulo, who always has his top off to sexualise himself mainly. Ethnicity. Now I'm always worried about coming off as racist when I talk about this, so I'm going to be really careful. African American rappers are shown in music videos as pimps and drug dealers, so Snoop Dogg is always seen smoking marijuana, often surrounded by women in little clothing, if any, at all. And doctors... And Dr. Dre showed us that African American people wear gold chains, grow up in girls at a strip club, and are basically just seen as criminals. This shows African Americans in a negative way, but sex sells, so who cares? White people could not be any further apart from African American representation. Like Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, he's shown in a very positive light by performing on stage and wearing a lot of white clothing, which implies a religious connotation of the band, probably to be seen as an important superior band to other rock bands. However, sometimes these two ethnicities are shown together and both are portrayed positively. For example, Run DMC and Aerosmith collaborated on the song Walk This Way in 1986. The video featured a black hip hop group performing with a white rock band, the video has been considered a milestone in media because of the integration of ethnicities. Right, I've got to be careful what I say now. Gender. The concept of gender roles is almost always used in pop videos and mainstream music. For example, Nicki Minaj makes her role as a female very, very obvious. She sexualizes herself by wearing as little amount of clothing as she can legally get away with in a music video. Now I'm fairly... Now I'm a fairly big believer of leaving some things to the imagination, which is good considering not all genders are sexualized in the music scene. For example, the likes of the lead singer of the Cranberries would always be wearing typical everyday clothes rather than provocative bikinis. Men are also sexualized in pop music, wearing very tight pants in music videos to outline their groin, as well as almost always being topless. This is always used by the likes of Jason Derulo, Flo Rida and of course Pitbull. But sometimes males aren't topless, instead usually wear suits, like Robin Thicke, which implies the gentleman-like gender role. Gender in music videos are also shown through occupation. For example, Billy Joel's Uptown Girl, three men are dressed as engineers, a job males stereotypically have. I, I hope I didn't offend anyone with my talk on gender, but if I did, I'm just, I'm just so sorry. Costume often ties in with gender to differentiate between them. For example, a male's costume in a music video would be a suit and tie, shorts and t-shirt, and jeans and shirt. This is stereotypical clothing for a male to wear. Women, when not being sexualized, typically wear skinny jeans, vest tops, floral t-shirts, and dresses. Stereotypical clothing for women to wear. However, sometimes the stereotype of costumes are challenged. For example, Lady Gaga wore a suit and tie to sing Frank Sinatra's New York, New York. This was done to portray the image of a male using costume. Props are an extremely broad topic as well as product placement because of the dozens of different genres. For instance, a rap music video will often feature an expensive car and guns like in NWA's video for Straight Outta Compton. For indie bands, the props include acoustic guitars, vinyl records and above all, spliffs.